Hello and welcome to a lesson about federal elections in Canada. Election time is one of my favourite times because it's when the people of Canada get excited and interested in choosing new leaders and getting interested in what's best for Canada. So in today's lesson, we're going to work in your Discover Canada guide from pages 30 to 32. Now keep in mind that in this lesson, we're only talking about federal elections. And in federal elections, the people of Canada re-elect or choose a new member of Parliament or an MP to represent them in the House of Commons. By law, federal elections must be held on the third Monday in October every four years. The Prime Minister is allowed to ask the Governor General to call an earlier election. Canada is now divided into 338 electoral districts. Please do notice the change from your guide where it says 308. This is one of those updates I told you about. Electoral districts are geographic areas all across Canada and one MP represents each area in the House of Commons in Ottawa. Other words that we see in the guide that also mean electoral district are ridings and constituencies. Canadian citizens who are 18 years and older can run in an election to become an MP. There can be many candidates or people who run for office in an electoral district and that's a good thing because it's healthy to have some competition so that you get the best MP. At election time, the people in an electoral district vote for the candidate and the political party they like best. The candidate who receives the most votes becomes the MP for that electoral district. So it's important to know how voting works in Canada. Remember, as citizens, it's a right and a responsibility to vote in elections. So here is a list that shows when a person is ready to vote in Canada. You must be a Canadian citizen. You must be 18 years old on voting day. And you must be on the voters list. Let's talk about the voters list for a moment. This is a list that is used for federal elections and referendums made by an agency called the National Register of Electors. It is part of a bigger non-political agency called Elections Canada. So this really is a permanent database of Canadian citizens who are 18 and older and are qualified to vote. When an election is called, Elections Canada mails out voter information cards to everyone on the list. The card has all the information you need about where to go and when to vote on election day. There is a number to call if you need any help like an interpreter or if you have special needs. If you know that you can't vote on election day, for example, maybe you aren't going to be in Canada on the election day, your voter card has information about what is called advanced polls. This is a way that you can vote before the election day and your voter information card will have that information about where and when you can vote. You can see the government really wants to help people get out to vote. If you do not wish to have your name on the National Register of Electors or you don't get your voter information card in the mail, don't worry, you can still vote. You can get your name added to the voters list at any time, including on election day. Now let's talk about the secret ballot. I know this sounds mysterious and exciting, but really it's about the fact that how you choose to vote is private. By law, nobody can watch you vote or look at how you voted. If you choose to tell others how you voted, that is up to you. But nobody, including family members, your employer, union representatives, can pressure you into telling them how you voted. It's the law and that's no secret. 
After the polling stations close on elections day, the elections officers count up all the ballots in the box and those results are added up and then announced on TV and put in the newspapers and online. It's always exciting to stay up late and watch the results come in. Let's go to page 32 in your Discover Canada guide to review some voting procedures that happen during elections. The first thing you see is that you get your voter information card in the mail. This is the card that tells you where and when to vote. Number two tells you what to do if you don't get a card. For example, if you move and don't get one, you can always go to the Elections Canada website and update your information or call Elections Canada at this phone number. Number three is about how to vote before Election Day at an advanced poll or vote by a special ballot. That information is also on your voter card. Number four is what you do on Election Day. You need to go to the polling station, which will be somewhere near your home, usually in a church, school, or recreation center, and it will have signs. You should bring your voter information card and proof of your identity and address. A photo ID is best for this. Number five, marking the ballot or voting. You must make an X in the circle next to the name of the candidate of your choice. Here's an example of what a ballot looks like. Number six, remember voting is secret, so you will go behind a cardboard screen and mark your ballot. Then you will fold it so nobody sees who you voted for and you will give it to the election officials. Number seven is about the ballot box. The poll official will tear off the ballot number and give you your ballot back so you can put it in the ballot box. And then you're done. Number eight, you can go home and check for the election results to come in. Every ballot is counted and the results are made public as soon as all the polls across Canada are closed. So I hope you liked learning about elections in this lesson. Like I said, I love staying up late at night and watching the election results come in. Voting takes a while in Canada because it's such a big country with a lot of time zones. All right, so in the next lesson, we're going to learn about what happens after the election and Canada's main political parties. See you soon. Mm -hmm.